OpenR AI have now released their new and improved Ultimate Upscaler, an AI image upscaler you can use on your AI art or also with your own images uploaded directly into the interface. You can take more control over your upscales with the different options available to more effectively increase the resolution of your images very easily. And today I'm going to show you exactly how it works. But I also want to mention that OpenR AI are sponsoring this video. There's a link in the description if you want to check it out for yourself. Now there's a few simple ways to start. First way is if I want to create an image or use an existing image, head over here to create image and I have access to all the images I've created in the past that I can use in the upscaler. If I want to create an image, I come over the left here and we're actually going to switch from OpenArt SDXL. We're going to switch to Flux Realism, which is a brand new model which has a lore added to it for enhanced realism in your images. I choose Flux Realism, add a prompt. I have the face of a grizzled old man with a scruffy beard professional portrait because I want to see how well this upscaler and this new model handles faces. I come down, I'm going to choose landscape for the sake of the video and I'm going to create two images by hitting create. And the two new images appear up here. I can preview them. This one's going to be a really great test. So I'm going to head down here and I can use my normal upscaling features over here, but we want to test out the ultimate upscaler to see what results we can get. So I click on ultimate upscale and that brings us over to the ultimate upscale interface. It's already brought my image over and on the right I have a few other images I've upscaled. But right now, if I scroll down, you can see we have precise upscale, refined upscale and creative upscale. Precise being a exact replica upscale of the original, refined adding some enhancements and creative developing the image much further. So you have different levels of creativity in your upscale. And I'm gonna show you what I mean. We're gonna do some comparisons. So you can see here with precise, there aren't any other options. If I click on refined, now we get an enhancement level to work with. Creative, we can choose between version one, version two, and also an enhancement level. We're only gonna work with version two this time, but we can also add a prompt if we need to as well. But for now, we're gonna head up to precise and do our first test on this image. And I'm gonna click create to upscale that image. And then we wait on the right for it to go through. And now our image has been upscaled. I click on that. And we can do a bit of a before and after, but it's a bit hard to see zoomed out. So I'm going to download and compare both the original and this new upscale. And here we have our original image. If we zoom in and compare, you see things are much smoother. So we've got a really nice upscale. Some of the details in the hair may need to be refined a little bit with some of the other upscales, but overall, that's a pretty good result. But pop these two side by side and let's move around a little bit to see especially around the lips and the beard hair. Things are looking much more refined and much smoother, but we move around a little bit more and where it starts to lose focus in the image, it adds a nice little sort of grain to it so it doesn't look too artificial. So I think that's not bad, but let's see what else we can make happen with this ultimate upscaler. But coming back, we also have the refined upscale. So if I hover over precise, you'll see that it pretty much tries to keep everything exactly the same, but just sort of sharpens up the edges, whereas refined, added some subtle AI generated enhancements for better textures and a polished, refined, high quality look. So if I move to refined, we have different levels of enhancement. I'm gonna bring this down to zero and click create and also adjust up to some of these other levels like 0.25, 5, 7.5 and compare the different levels so we can see how they turn out. So once again, we have our original image. I'm gonna zoom in a little bit to fill the screen and we're gonna switch over to the refine at a level of 0, 0.0. And as I move up through to say 0 0.25 and then onwards up to 0 0.5, up to 0 0.75, all the way through to one, you'll notice the image changes slightly, but ultimately it keeps the exact same appearance. Everything looks same, the eye colors the same. It does a great job of maintaining the image while increasing the detail. But let's take a closer look side by side. At 0, 0.0, you'll notice that things are sharper. But as we move up again to 0 0.25, it just changes a little bit up to 0 0.5. It changes a little bit further. And the higher up we go at 0 0.75 and eventually 0 0.1, things are just a little bit sharper texture wise. So in most, in this instance at least, I think having the creativity level at full has created a sharper image while keeping true to the original. And if you move to the eye, you can notice when we go from one and then go back down through the scores that the eye loses a little bit of detail. 
But now if you remove the refine upscale with the full level of one in creativity to the left, you can look between the two and see there's a little more detail, a little more accuracy in the eye. So I do think that you wanna maximize it to the best you can before it starts losing too much detail and run with that and sort of find the balance when upscaling your images. But now let's step it up to the creative upscale and using version two, again, we're gonna start with a very subtle level of enhancement all the way through to one full creative setting. We do this without a prompt and go from there. But you'll notice this time as we go from the original image and climb through from zero to 0 0.25 to 0.5 to 0.75 and finally to 0.1 that we get a very different image across the level each, each time that we increase that creativity and actually changes the eye color in some of these and changes the facial features. So you can sort of see how this is useful for not necessarily getting an exact replica of a person, but if the actual facial features and the exact person doesn't matter as much, so maybe for advertising or something like that, you can get a sharper image of something that is very similar to what you supplied. So considering the nature of the creative upscale and the changes we saw, maybe I can go back to my original image, copy that prompt, then come down to the prompt bar, paste that prompt in. And because the eye color change, I can add in with blue eyes and guide a bit more of that prompt by actually telling the upscaler what I want. So keeping the creative level at full, let's see what results we get. And although the man does look a little bit different, they have definitely kept the blue eyes in there. And remember, this is with a creativity level of full. So that means it's really gone next level with the creativity and really focused on those blue eyes. But it doesn't just end there because what we can do is change things a little bit more. What I can do is say the face of a grizzled old man of Japanese ancestry with a scruffy beard with blue eyes, professional portrait. I can even add something in like intense angry stare to sort of see if we can steer the upscaler into a different direction and get something a little bit more unique. But this time, let's try the different levels of creativity going from zero to halfway to full to see what we get. And again, going from our original, we go to zero and there's already a lot of change in that image. If we move up to 0.5, it changes a little bit more. You can see a little bit more of that Japanese ancestry here and up to full, where apart from the blue eyes, it looks like a complete transformation and even the stare looks a little bit different. Now, before I finish with the creative upscale, one thing I wanna mention is we are using version two and a lot of people out there actually prefer version one. So just very quickly, I'm gonna take version one and we're gonna try three different levels and compare it to version two to see which version kind of comes off the best. Now, it's interesting to note that every level of V1 actually looks closer to the original image than what we got with V2. But how does it compare in regard to the details of the upscale? So going back to Creative V2 with an adjustment level of zero, we get this image. But let's pop it side by side with V1 to see what they look like from a distance. And again, you can see that V1 is actually closer to the original than V2. But let's zoom in on the eye. And although there's not a big difference here, there is some details like eyelashes, uh, the pupil and the actual detail of the eye is not as developed in V1, despite the fact that it's closer. So that is another factor. Move up to 0.5 and it's a similar thing. V2 does seem to have better detail, but we move up to a full adjustment level of one and we've got a bit of a funny thing going on with the eye there. So even though it is closer, I sort of feel like it's not quite as advanced in the details as version two. Now we move down and explore more of the face, like the facial hair and the lips and the texture again, V1's not quite as developed as V2, but it is more similar. So you've got to kind of pick what you want there. Again, that balance between detail and similarity, it makes a big difference. Bring that adjustment score down to 0.5 and then down to 0 0.0. And you can see it's pretty much the same kind of uh, result in regards to the detail and similarity. So how do these upscalers actually compare? With our original image of 1024 by 672, the precise upscale basically gives us a 4x upscale, bring it up to 4000, while Refine and Creative does a little bit less at around 3.5, but not exactly. So, however, these upscalers don't actually multiply by multiples. They produce an image up to a certain resolution on the longest edge. For example, the precise upscale will actually take your images up to 4096 on the longest edge, regardless of aspect ratio. Whereas the refined and creative upscales is more adaptive 
depending on the aspect ratio to try and get a similar sized image of total pixels, sort of give or take. So generally speaking, the precise upscale does create a larger resolution image that's not quite as detailed as refined or creative, but in more extreme aspect ratios, like say four to one, you start to get a higher resolution on the refined and creative upscale simply because of that adaptive nature. But let's take a closer look to see which of these models does a better job with the details. Now you can see I've zoomed in the eye here of the precise, the refined and the creative upscales. And because the highest level of creativity produces the sharpest result, both the refine and the creative are at creative level of one. Now, the precise obviously has kept things as close to the original as possible, but when you compare it to the refine right next to it, the reflection in the eye, the sharpness of the actual pupil, it has a, done a better job, and even the skin texture just under the eye, the refine definitely does a better job of creating better detail. So even though it's a smaller image, it actually does a better job of upscaling. But when we go up to creative, it has done as good a job, I would say, but it's so different that it's kind of hard to tell. But if we move to somewhere else in the image, you can clearly see here that the hair on the creative is much finer and more detailed than on the refine and definitely the precise. And if we move in a little bit and check out some of the texture of the skin, the lips and the hair around the mouth, you can see how that's further pronounced on the creative upscale, at least with this image, as far as I can tell. But I move up again and check out an area like the nose and even some of the finer details on the creative, like the little tiny hairs on the nose are a little bit better. Although there's a bit more of a red sort of texture on the refine. So this goes to show you when you add some creativity, it does a good job of really enhancing details and really getting a much cleaner and more realistic upscale. But again, when you zoom out and view all the images, there is a big difference between the creative and the other two. Refine does a really good job of keeping things pretty close. So, but it might not be perfect in all instances. There are minor differences, but overall, I think Refine is probably gonna be the happy medium for most people. Because at the end of the day, the biggest thing you need to do is figure out where on this spectrum works best. Precise will give you the least amount of detail added to the image, but keep things as close as possible. And as you move down, you start to move a little bit further away from the original layout, but get a better quality upscale in the details. So finding that balance is crucial for getting the highest quality image when upscaling. Now, what if we want to experiment with our own images, not ones created in OpenArt AI? Well, simply head down left here to apps, scroll down to image editing, and then ultimate upscale. Then from there, we can upload an image by clicking here or drag and drop this image of me, which is 800 pixels by 800 pixels. And let's see what results we get with these different profiles. Now to start off, my image, which is a photo of me, is 800 by 800 pixels, and you can see it's me. And in this case, I'm gonna want the image to look exactly like me and exactly like a photo. And this image was created using the creativity upscaler with a setting of 0.5, so about halfway, and you can see it's virtually identical, although not really. <laughs> it looks pretty good, but it also doesn't look real, it doesn't really look like me. And there's also some little artifacts. You can see little faces on the right-hand side. So I decided to switch to Refine. Now Refine was much closer, but still looked a little bit cartoony. So I decided to bring the creativity level down from about 0.5 to about zero. And what I got was much closer, but still not quite right. And the resolution was still only a little shy of 3000 by 3000 pixels. So in this case, switching to Precise, I got an upscale which looks exactly like me. So in this particular instance, Precise was the better choice. When you zoom in on the details, you can really see it's done a pretty good job of upscaling this photo. So for photos, and in particular instances, depending on how things are laid out, the kind of detail on the photo, Precise may be the best, but it's still not that cut and dry. Depending on the image, you may need to experiment to get the best results. Let's look at a few examples of that. So I have this image I created with the flux realism model of a man and a tiger. This is the precise upscale, looks virtually identical, but I zoom in and some of the details of the face just aren't there. There's simply not enough information there for precise to access, so I need to move to something like refine. They are improved, still not quite right. But by going up to creative, we do get a different man and a tiger, but what we get is a lot better and actually the details actually look like they're supposed to be that way. So I didn't get the exact same image, but it is possible to sort of, when this particular instance, I don't care if the guy looks the same or not, 
Creative was the best option. I can also confirm that by zooming in on the Tiger and you can see from model to model, the Tiger just looks better on Creative. Even zooming in on the details, you can see a big difference. So once again, what's in the image determines what's actually gonna be the best upscaler to use. This Batman image is a really good example of how when we switch to refine, we get something that's almost identical with a few little improvements and it's perfect for reproducing this image. But if I wanted to make the image more interesting, a little bit more edgy, then Creative is a great job of setting that up to the next level. So it really depends on what your preference is in this particular instance. Or in this image, I found that because it's a bit dark, not a ton of detail, Creative was a natural choice, even though it changed her face a little bit, it really sharpens up that image and creates something pretty awesome. So a solid example of when you may want to work with say the creative first and really sort of jump the gun a bit is an image like this, which I think is a cool effect, but just looks a little bit too artistic or cartoony and I want it to really become more detailed, more lifelike, is that when I head to Ultimate Upscale, because it looks that cartoony I want to, and I definitely want to add detail, I will go straight to creative, keep it at about halfway, hit create, and now that we have a better understanding of how it works, I can zoom in on this one, which looks artistic, go to my creative upscale and see that the amount of detail it's added has really changed the image for the better and more towards something I was looking for. And side by side, you can just see that it's walked away from that image a little bit, but ultimately it's still very similar. So understanding where you want to go with images is a big part of this as well. So understanding that you can not only just upscale, but also slightly restyle your images makes this more than just a simple upscaler. Anyone in a creative industry really needs access to some kind of AI upscaler if they're gonna be using AIR or low resolution images. It just makes a big difference to what you can actually achieve. So if you would like to try out Open Arts Ultimate Upscaler, check out the link below. They're a very, very cool platform, tons of different models, tons of different apps, and this is another powerful addition to their suite of tools. So I wanna thank them for sponsoring this video and once again, if you enjoyed the video, guys, please consider giving it a like. Otherwise, thanks for watching. Hope to see you again soon. Have a great day.